everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope that wherever you are on the planet today, you are having a beautiful day because you deserve it. And I want that beautiful day for you. I wanna start by just thanking each and every one of you who subscribes and stays connected. And if you don't subscribe, I would love if you would. Just drop down, hit that subscribe button, and let's keep it together. I also wanna say thank you to my patrons on Patreon, as you know. I don't put ads on my video because I don't like watching ads with videos and so I don't want to do that to anybody. Most of the work that I do, my spiritual teaching, I offer for free and if you'd like to support the work that I do, I would love that and be so grateful. All you have to do is go to patreon.com slash crystalancompton. Even a book helps keep me giving this free content to you. Mahalo and I thank you in advance. But again, even if you're not a patron, I just appreciate you guys being here. I love talking with you. I love sharing with you. And today I have something really powerful to share with you. I'm gonna be sharing a technique that I learned from Neville Goddard. Now, a lot of you know that I am kind of a Neville Goddard fan. I'm a fangirl for Neville Goddard. Um, I think he is probably one of the preeminent teachers on mind science on the trinity aspect of the human being which of course is your body mind and spirit but also the conscious the unconscious and not the unconscious but the subconscious and the feeling which is what connects the two neville teaches us all about that and how we can create a life for ourselves that we truly love by just changing the way we think and the way we feel i've put up a few lessons on neville goddard teachings i believe i have a playlist on my YouTube channel. You can go and check that out if you're ever interested. But today what we're going to be talking about is Neville Goddard's teaching called the pruning shears of revision. The pruning shears of revision. And this is a technique that Neville did every single night. And this is the technique that I now do almost every single night. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I have a glass of wine. I just go to bed, but I try to make it a discipline to do this technique because it really does work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just portions out of the lecture in which Neville actually presented this technique so that we can understand how to do it. And then I'll return after that with my commentary. Let's just read it in Neville's own words because they're powerful. I feel that this morning's subject that this could be it. That if I never said another word and you heard it and believed it and really used it, this technique, this would be the planting that would spread from us here that tomorrow could not undo. For it is magic. This pruning shears of revision. It really is not only the achievement of objectives or of goals, but if you do it daily, it will awaken in you the spirit of Jesus, which is continual forgiveness of sin. He then goes on to talk about Jesus and sin, but I'm not going to I'm not going to cover that simply because Neville's perception of Jesus and his perception of sin is not dogmatic. It is not religious. It's a different. It's an esoteric or a metaphysical take on it, and I don't want to sort of sidetrack and explain that. So we're just going to move on to the next section. Now, this is how we do it, Neville says. Again, the pruning shears of revision. At the end of my day, I review the day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings, and then, as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform or align to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and I rewrite it. I revise it and having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day. And I do it over and over in my imagination until this seeming imagined state begins to take on the tones of reality, meaning starts to feel real. I really feel that this revised day is the day that I lived and I'm living in the energy of that real revised day day. It seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it, and I found from experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. 
When I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow. For in me I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. What Neville is saying is if something today disappointed me, if somebody let me down, if it didn't go the way that I wanted it to go, I spend time in the imaginal mind, which is like an astral workshop. And the imagination, remember, is just as powerful and real as the physical material reality. In fact, it's more powerful when we combine our feeling or those tones of reality with the imagination or with the thought. And he's saying, if something disappointed me in my day, I go into this workshop space, the imagination, and I rewrite it. I revise it. And instead of me getting into an argument with somebody, I imagine that that conversation went the best way possible with the best outcome for me and for that person. And I revise it until it's perfect. And I relive it over and over and over again until it feels as if that really was what I experienced. That's the key. And the next day, even though the previous day you actually had an argument, you'll meet up with the person that you had the argument with and the energy will be different. There will be a shift. The argument will have been diffused because you changed it in the imagination. You changed it with the subconscious. You reframed the relationship altogether using the pruning shears of revision. Moving on. If you take me seriously today, Neville says, tonight, do not let the sun descend upon any vexation of the day. Just look at it. Don't deny it. Don't pretend it didn't happen. Don't duck it. Look at it that you may prune it and then reshape it. Take the conversations with your friends today. Were they pleasant? Were they arguments? No matter what it is, were they negative? Then rewrite the script and just imagine the conversation to have taken place that now you are rewriting for the first time and it will take place for everything in your world that you behold. Though it appears without, it is within It's within your imagination. And this wonderful imagination of yours is Christ Jesus. This this speaks to his esoteric understanding of Jesus Christ. Imagination, Neville says, is the actual habitation of every created thing, every outpictured thing, everything that we see in our materiality. That starts first in the workshop, the inner space within the conscious and the subconscious. No matter what you see in the world, it springs from your imagination. So that's where you go. That's your workshop. That's the garden of the God. And now, Neville says, you have a mission. You have a purpose in life. It's a noble purpose because you have been selected to really become the chief gardener in the garden of God. And in the garden, you must have pruning shears and the pruning shears of revision. How powerful is that? How powerful is that? A simple technique. Tonight, when you go to bed, Neville says, don't let the sun go down on your vexations, on the things that bothered you, on the things that troubled you, on the things that are giving you anxiety, on the things that went wrong. Don't fall asleep with the energy of those vexations inside of you. Instead, rewrite them, revise them so that what you imagine is the highest version of the highest outcome for yourself and for anybody else involved and for the community and for the world. And you continue to do this. You continue to revise and rewrite and prune with these shears until it feels real. And tomorrow, your world will be different. You will have rewritten the landscape of your experience for your future. You don't believe me? Try it. Neville is absolutely right when he says this is the this is the most powerful thing 
I've taught. And if you can just remember this one thing that I'm teaching you, you will change your life. You will become the chief gardener in the garden of God. Snaps for Neville. Powerful. Try it and let me know what you think in the comments. I love each and every one of you. Bye, guys.